your tits. Dunkin' Donuts. What is up, guys? It's T. Kyle here, and welcome back to another weekend chat. Sorry for the delay. Today is not Friday. Today is Sunday, meant to be a day of rest, but not for May, um, because I'm recording this podcast today instead of Friday, because I watched a little show called Pose on Friday, and we're going to discuss that in a minute. But um, I was an emotional wreck all Friday, all Saturday in the morning, and I was like, I don't really want to make a podcast today. So here we are. But we're going to discuss all of that. And um, I don't have coffee today either. I'm just, you know, I'm off brand this morning. Uh, It's Sunday, day of rest, no Dunkin'. Um, I was like, gonna go get coffee. And then I was like, actually, I don't need it. Like, I'm fine. You know what I mean? Like, you go and you're like, "Mm." well, that's not really a thing. Anyway, so they still got free promo, even though um, I didn't get iced coffee today. But I am, however shaking my tits this week and I have to confess I saw everyone on Twitter being like oh my god this new Ashley O Black Mirror single Queen of Pop and like when someone says Queen of Pop I'm like okay are they really a Queen of Pop no you know what I mean like we we call everyone Queens of Pop and um well when I call someone a Queen of Pop it's true but when most people say it it's like a joke so I was like okay yeah this song from Black Mirror is not going to be iconic And then I listened to it and I was like, wait a minute, this is actually a bop. Like this could chart, this could do well. Um, I was out last night and it came on in the the bar I was at and everyone went wild over it. Like you would have thought that it was like the biggest single of the summer. I mean, it might be. And I was like, holy shit, like literally fake queen of pop Ashley O is doing what the girls should have did. You know what I mean? I was like, wow, okay. And um, also, like, I feel like it's doing better than Miley Cyrus's, like, actual new EP, which is also kind of, like, I really like the song Mother's Daughter. But um, I'm shaking my tits to On a Roll by Ashley O. Hey, I'm a ho. Well, it's not technically that, but it sounds like that, which I think is intentional, and that's smart. I love a subtle, um, unintended, or what's the word? Indirect message, you know what I'm saying? Like... If you seek Amy, how she's saying, like, begging to F-U-C-K me. You see, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's saying it without actually saying it. So we stand, Ashley O, new queen of pop. All the pop girls are shaken off the charts. And um, that's what I'm loving. And I still have to actually watch the episode of Black Mirror, which is on my plan for today. It was on my plan um, this weekend to watch Black Mirror and also Pose. I completed Pose. And that's what I want to talk about next. Don't worry, I'm not going to spoil anything. I am not that kind of girl. I had been seeing people tweeting about the second season, and I was so nervous that I was going to see a spoiler, and I was like, shit, like, I have to dedicate a day and binge the entire first season. I know I'm late. Don't come for me. I am not really a big scripted TV person, um, especially with stuff that I know is going to make me sob. I need to, like, plan it out, you know what I'm saying? And... um. I love to binge watch TV. Like I love to do an eight, 10, 12 hour binge where I can just like shut everything off and just completely get immersed in the story and in the music. You know what I'm saying? Is that weird? I hate cliffhangers. I also feel like my weeks are so fucked up that if I watch a show and then I miss the next week, like I fall off, you know what I mean? Anyway, the point being that I binged, Season one of Pose, it is on FX. Season two just started two weeks ago. It is on Netflix is where I, I binged it. But I I mean, I'm just assuming it would be on the FX website too. Or like on demand. I don't know. I don't have cable. So don't know what that is. But you guys, this show is fucking phenomenal. And you guys know I don't endorse a lot of things. Like if I don't really love something, I'm not going to lie to you and be like, this is iconic. Like, I'm not one of those people that's like, oh my God, iconic with like every single thing to like bandwagon on social media for attention. Like, if I don't like something, I don't talk about it. If I think something is good, I'm going to tell you. And this show is a must watch. Everything from the characters, the character development, the cinematography, the sound editing is phenomenal. Like, just subtle details and... I watch TV with headphones. Um, 
not that that is like an important detail, but like I do just because I can hear everything better. I, is that making me sound old? Maybe so. And just like the, the detailing and like the stereo sound effects, like, and maybe no one cares about this. Maybe this is just me, but like, I, I think recently, like I've been doing the podcast, you guys know, and, um, the, well, hi, hello here. Um, like I really have loved editing sound and, um, you know, I just did that ASMR real housewives video. That is like, if you listen with headphones, like it's very intricate. Um, I'm very into all that stuff and like little details, like hearing doors close in the background and then the, the sound would be directed into like the far left and clicking noises and footprints and the sound effects when they would use, um, like stuff in the kitchen, like little things like that, that probably go completely unnoticed. I was just completely, what's the word? Enveloped, enveloped. No, it's enveloped, right? It's enveloped, whatever it was. I was in it. Like I felt like I was in it and it was amazing. And if you, I, this is what I think is going to be interesting and please send me a DM and let me know if you decide to watch it what your response is. Um, If you're gay, if like you're in the LGBTQ community, I think you need to watch this as like a learning, like a, like you should watch this because it's important history and it is important to watch this and hear these stories. You know, it's, it's trans characters that are played by trans women. And that is so important and learn humanity like the humanity of these these characters and the heart of these characters and the first half of pose is extremely heavy i'm not gonna lie when i tell you i have not sobbed this hard in a very very long time like there's like i can count on one hand times in my life where like i've been inconsolable the first episode i was crying so hard and it captures the heart of these characters so well that it just, you can't help but feel for them, you know? So the first half, it's only eight episodes, so you can do it in a day. Um, The first half is brilliant at capturing that. You really just feel for these, these people. They're human. I mean, they're humans. Like we're all humans. And it just, it's just the way it's done is so brilliant. And, heartbreaking and um then as the season progresses it it does there are a lot of like uplifting happy moments and you see the characters progress and their relationships progress and oh my fucking god it is just so good and I love Blanca I'm like I think she's my favorite character like I just there's like something about her spirit that I like connect with and I feel like it's so weird like I I very rarely watch scripted tv and I'm not like a big book person so there's been very few times where I've like connected with a a fictional character but there's just so much to this show that is so important for people to watch and to hear these stories and to just oh it's brilliant and it reminded me a lot of Rent. I, I love Rent. I'm not a big musical person either, but I grew up loving Rent. There was something about the characters and New York City. I always wanted to go to New York City, and, you know, obviously I'm here. I feel like there are references to Rent in Pose, which I also thought were amazing. Um, very subtle, but I noticed them. I don't know if they were intentional or if I was just kind of connecting the dots myself. But I loved that so much. It just felt like um, a connection in a way to a similar, you know, it's obviously set in a similar time, but with different characters. um, And it just was, oh my God, I just can't say enough about it. And also the music is incredible. And there is one scene, and I'm not spoiling anything, but I found this so inspiring because when I watch shows, I, I watch it, you know, and I obviously watch it and get the story and you know the plot and whatnot but because I work in media and I work in video editing and sound editing like I always am watching in like two separate ways I guess like I'm always looking at and I have to like stop and and rewatch a lot uh which is probably why I don't like going to movies and why I don't like 
binge watching TV with people because I'm always like stopping rewatching scenes because I was paying attention to something going on in the background or paying attention to the camera angles or the music mixing. Um, there's one scene set to the song Private Dancer by Tina Turner, which I have not heard that song in so long. And the way, like, it is such a standout scene for me because the lyrics, the music, the way it's edited, ed- oh my God, blah, blah, edit, edited, edited. Why is that such a weird word to say? Edited? The way that they edit it, <laughs> the scene, it tells so many different stories and captures all these different moments happening in numerous characters' lives. And it just is gorgeous. Like the way that they do it, I was like, holy shit. Like no one said a single word. There was no writing involved in like this one scene. And just the music mixed with the visuals told such a good story and such a complete full story. And I just, I don't know. I just found it really inspiring how well this was done and how well these stories and these characters were able to come across through the editing and the mixing and the music and the writing and just, oh my God, I I honestly cannot say enough about it. I highly recommend, make sure that you grab a Kleenex, especially for the first few episodes. Um, but not that, like, don't be like deterred that it's emo. like it really, like the way that they portray these characters, you just connect with them immediately and I can't wait to start uh season two I am gonna I don't know maybe I'll watch it today I was a wreck you guys like I literally I finished the first four episodes and I was so um I don't know it just like really like there were certain things that like reminded me of my own coming out moment um obviously I'm not a person of color I this is like you know I'm not trans but you know and I can't relate to that experience ever but um, there were like things in the writing and things that were said that like I have heard in my own journey, like coming out and being kind of like rejected for a while. I need to tell that story at some point, but it almost was like cathartic in a way to like watch this and I can't even get into it. I'm going to start sobbing again, but basically watch it (laughs) is what I'm saying. And it just got picked up for a third season. So I'm just so excited to see how these characters progress. Um, And I can't wait to start season two. I'm, I might just start it today because I like, I need, I need the whole season. Like this is what I was saying before. Like I hate that there's only two episodes of pose out right now for season two, because I, I need it all. I need all eight, 10, nine, whatever it is. I'm like, I need it. Same with below deck med. Sorry to take like a complete left turn here to low. We just went highbrow to lowbrow. But, like, I need all 12, 14, however many episodes of Below Deck Med there are. I need them now. It is so good. I hate, my God, I hate fucking waiting. That's a Britney quote. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate fucking waiting. I need to know what happens, and I need to know now. You know what I'm saying? Also, what was so cool about it is I know every single place that they film at. Like, I've lived here for 13 years, and it was just something about seeing these places and just thinking, you know, like, this city has, you know, been around for so long, and there's so many people that are still here that just have so many stories. And even the people in my building, like, the stories that I've heard from them about, well, let's just say my neighbors have told, one of my neighbors told me this all these crazy stories about all the prostitutes that used to come in and out in the 80s. Oh my God, I was living, like, fascinating. Um, I love New York history. I love, you know, that time frame. I love the aesthetic of the 80s and 90s in New York City and the cars and the lights and the neon lights. And it's just gorgeous. Like, all of it is amazing. I can't say enough about it. I've been, t- I don't know how long have I have been ranting about this. Oh my God, I've been ranting about this for 17 minutes. In this that 17 minutes, you could have started episode one already, but <laughs> thank you for being here. Um, is that all I need to say? Let me look at my notes real quick. Yes. Yeah. Also, um, there was like some songs in the music, uh, like in the, not the music, in the playlist that's featured throughout the, uh, show that were also in GTA Vice City. Is that like weird for me to like notice? But like there were certain songs I was like, oh my God, I heard this in that nightclub in GTA Vice City. Cause that's set in the, uh, I believe the late eighties. 
Um, so like the same kind of time frame as Pose. And I was like, oh my God, wow. Like all these things happening at the same time. You know, <laughs> that's stupid of me to say. That was another lowbrow reference for you guys. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I highly recommend if you're like me and you don't like to be outside in the heat, put on the AC and sit back and watch Pose and get ready to cry. It is fucking amazing. And um, that's what I did this weekend. And then I went out last night and it was so crowded. So I wound up coming home, but I'm here and it's been a week. And I honestly am so glad that I watched that show because it was an interesting week to say the least. And I felt like so re-inspired after watching the show. And it just reminded me and kind of like restored my mood. It's been an interesting week, you guys. Um, I'll get into it a little bit here. And if you listen to last week, I talked to you guys about my most recent video edit edit that I did. Why can't why have such a hard time saying the word edit? Is it just a weird word? I don't know. My ASMR edit that I did, I'm still to this day just getting like people messaging me nonstop. Um, I was at a bar last night and this kid came up to me and was like, oh my God, you're the guy who did that Real Housewives whispering at each other. And I was like, yeah, it was kind of funny. And it did really well. And um, let me just read these numbers for you guys. Um, 2.3 million views on Twitter and 1 million views on Facebook. This is to date my most viewed meme edit that I've ever done. And I've done a lot. If you followed me for a long time, I have made the most ridiculous shit every couple weeks. I feel like I, I, I don't really do it as much anymore. I used to do it way more back in the day, but now when I do it, it just gets like stolen on Instagram and like reposted everywhere. So I'm like, I'm not even like, this is not worth it to me to like, I'm not your like, whatchamacallit bread and butter to all these Instagram meme, meme accounts. But you know, Every now and then, I just like to get my uh, get back in the mix and kind of let the girls know who the OG is. But it's interesting because let me tell you something. When you start to do something successful, it's very interesting to see who turns on you. And I'm not going to get fully into it. But I will just tell you that there are some people out there who have really (laughs) not been pleased with what I've been doing on the internet and how successful it's being. And with that comes a bit of pettiness. And, you know, a couple months ago, I probably would have lost sleep over it. And it's honestly, I'm getting to a point now in my career where I am old, uh, (laughs) but I'm hitting a decade in media uh, since I graduated. I am, am I, is it 10 years of, as of next year? Oh my gosh. When did I graduate? Yes. Yeah. So I'm like almost a decade in to my career. I guess if you want to include like four years of, of undergrad, of practicing and learning all this craft, it's almost, you know, 14 years, I guess. And I'm kind of learning that like, I really feel like I have a skill and I have a talent and it's time for me to stop listening to what other people think about me because um, it's not important. <laughs> You know, it's more important what I feel about myself. And I wanted to share this with you guys because it's something that doesn't just happen on the internet, right? Like, so I'm telling you guys, I do something successful on the internet and what happens? So these other Instagram meme accounts accuse me of stealing from them. They say that I'm copying their work. And I'm just like, girl, I started a Tumblr almost a decade ago. I have been doing remixes, video edits, memes, GIFs since 2011. And even before that, I was popular on Tumblr before half, well, all of these. I was actually, no, Instagram didn't even have video. I don't even think of, yeah, I was doing Tumblr before Instagram even had video. So I'm aging myself here, but (laughs) facts are facts. I was doing this shit before these Instagram accounts were even allowed to post video memes. So It's laughable to me at this point. And it's just funny because it's something that is going to happen to you no matter what. There's always going to be like, do you guys ever have a friend who, you know, you do something, you have an accomplishment, whether it's big or small, and they always find a way to like undercut you to try and make you feel like you shouldn't be proud of yourself. We all have had someone in our life that does that, right? 
it's that type of person. That type of person, whether it's the friend who wants to undercut you, it's the person at work who tries to make you feel bad or tries to humiliate you or like make you embarrass you in front of your coworkers or steal your idea or like, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it happens everywhere. It happens in your personal life. It's going to happen in your work life. It's going to happen in your side hobbies. There's always going to be someone or multiple people who try and knock you down a peg. And it's something that I've been dealing with my whole life and always let it get to me, always let it bother me, always let it affect me, always let it stop me from doing what it was that I wanted to do. And I feel like I'm genuinely reaching a point now where I don't care because I know who I am. I know my skills. I know what I can and cannot do. And I know that I am a creative person and I don't need to copy other people. You know what I'm saying? Like I've done plenty of original work. I don't need to, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a copy machine. Um, and I realize now that that's just coming from a place of people trying to knock what I'm doing. Because the reality is, nothing on the internet is original. All of these meme accounts steal from each other. I mean, how many times do you guys see a post that's like, me on Monday morning, me at 5 p.m. on Friday, me at the gym? Is any of that original? Like, no. So nothing on the internet is original. And the point of memes, literally the definition, what is it? Let me get the actual technical definition because it literally means... Um, which is what I find so funny. Um, What is it? Yes. An element of a culture or system of behavior that may be considered to be passed from one individual to another by non-genetic means, especially imitation. A humorous image, video, piece of text, etc. that is copied often with slight variations and spread rapidly by internet users. That, my friends, is what a meme is. So it's laughable to me when people say, oh my God, you stole my meme, you stole my meme. I'm like, girl, I don't save and export and re-upload anyone else's shit. Anything that I post is my own. Um, I, You guys know, you hear my video edits. They're ridiculous. I can edit sound. I can edit video. I don't need to, to right-click, save, and re-upload someone else's work. You know what I mean? But um, that's kind of what this week was. It was... Um, there's also some other things, but, um, that I'm not going to get into, but it is very interesting, um, seeing how certain people respond when you have like internet successes, like, you know, I'm, it's like silly to me, uh, that people get like petty over, you know, like a video edit of mine doing well on the internet, you know, like I, it, I I don't, doesn't make sense, (laughs) um, But that was interesting, and I wanted to share that with you guys, especially because a lot of you here have been with me literally since the first year of Reality TV Gifts, and I just celebrated uh, my eighth year since I started that blog, and I posted about it on my Instagram and on Twitter, and a, uh, a couple of you tweeted and were like, oh my god, I've been there since the beginning And I just think that's so fucking cool. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been there literally since year one. I remember exactly when I hit 500 followers on Tumblr. And I felt like I that was like a moment where we were all, you know, like messaging each other and like replying. This is when you could still like reply in the the Tumblr comments or whatever. I remember like how cool it was that I felt like I was finding a community on the internet. And for some of you to stick around that long, I think is so fucking amazing. You've followed every single project that I've done. And I just want to say thank you. I appreciate it so much. I am so grateful that like you guys have always believed in me and always supported me when I've like said that I feel like a flop and like all that you guys know. If you've been an OG weekend chat person, you know there are some times where I'm on here and I'm a fucking mess. There have been times where I've been on a weekend chat and I've been wasted from the night before, you know, like you guys have seen all angles of me on here. And so I thought it was important to share this with you guys because you guys know I've had my ups and downs and I was talking about this yesterday, actually, yesterday night with Brad Mew Mews, um, co-host, Brittany Podcast. Um, it's him, if you guys don't know who, that, who it is. Um, and I was saying to him, I'm like, you know, I really feel like in the past month, I've been turning a new chapter of my life, and it feels really good. I feel like I'm learning more about who I am. Um, I'm 
gaining a little bit of confidence and, you know, it, it took a hot minute. I thought that going away on vacation was really important, uh, played a really important part in that, just disconnecting and kind of being able to literally sit in a pool in basically quiet peace and just meditate to myself. And I felt so connected to the earth. Is that weird? That's weird. But like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I felt like I had a moment where I was like, okay, you know who you are. You know what you're you're here to do. You know what your skills are. Block out all that noise. It's so unimportant and it's such bullshit. And it's not the, the people who care about you will tell you if you f- fucked up, if you need to do something. There are other people out there who just want to be assholes and they just want to knock you down a peg. And I'm learning to block that out. And I feel like that's important to share with you guys because it's always been a journey. It's always been an experience and a roller coaster. Um, speaking of roller coaster, new Jonas Brothers song on the new album, Roller Coaster, is really good. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And uh, it feels good. I I really do feel like I'm starting to see, uh, if you listen to last week's chat and the week chat, the weekend chat before that, I said that I didn't have a vision for myself in my 30s. And um, I've been taking time to work on that. Uh, mood board, writing things down, uh, thinking to myself, like, well, what is it that I want to do? And want to be and I'm starting to create and and see that vision of what T Kyle in his 30s will be and it feels good and um if you're out there listening and you feel stuck or you feel trapped just know that I feel you a hundred percent I have been there and just know that it may take you a little while to figure it out but just keep pushing whatever it is that you are doing creatively or in your work life or in your personal life just keep trying new things and keep at whatever craft it is that you do and you'll slowly get to figuring that out I'm 31 I'm still learning I'm still figuring it out there's still so many things that I want to learn I just got myself a full watercolor pen set I really want to do like uh, a drawing class and like learn how to paint using watercolor and just I I mean, I just think it's fun and I love doing things and creating things with my hands. I want to do more sound editing and sound mixing. And I was just talking to my friend last night about uh, mixing together music. I thought about going, taking a class actually, and and learning how to create beats and mix audio and and sound and music versus uh, vocal. Like I feel like I've mastered, not mastered, but gotten pretty good at editing voice and editing sound effects. But I'm not necessarily good at like one of the things to like impose the way that the episodes like close out and even the, the title card and the music and it's like category is, and you just hear the way the music builds in and the way it builds out. And if you listen with headphones, you'll hear, hear all the details, but like all of that shit I not that's it's not shit. It's I didn't mean that was shit. I meant like all of that all of that stuff. I want to learn how to do. I want to learn how to like take uh, a sound and have it fade out and drain out and stretch it out um, in a transition and mix audio sounds together and have things sound like they're in the distance. You know, like in the certain scenes they'd be in the club and the music would be full uh, full. You know, front full frontal I guess like like in the front in your face and then they would go and they'd be backstage and there'd be a door closed so the music would sound completely muffled but it wouldn't you know it it just you guys this stuff I'm such a nerd this stuff like really gets me going I like really want to learn how to do all of this and um I, yeah I want to take some classes and um, fuck everyone who wants to talk shit about me on the internet. I don't give a shit anymore. Um, some of you are, have been DMing me, be like, oh my God, I see these people. They're talking shit about you on the internet. I don't give a fuck. Let them talk shit. Um, I'm busy learning and teaching myself new things and trying to get better at my craft and come up with something new. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I really do feel like I'm getting to a new place. And um you know, I guess if they're talking, you're doing something right. I don't know. I've he- heard people say that before, um, but uh, I'm busy. <laughs> you know, like I, I, c- I can't let myself 
be bothered by the opinions of other people. You know what I mean? Um, there are enough of you who have been so supportive for so many years and followed me all the way to this episode and this moment right here. Um, if you're here right now, actually, send me, like, tweet me or DM me the upside down smiley face if you're still, like, at this point in this podcast. Because there are enough of you who have been so supportive. And, like, you guys are the ones who I care about. Your opinions matter to me. You guys have been there since the beginning and followed me through all my projects and been supportive. Like, like I just think about the people who, when I did that sticker giveaway, I think it was my first year of doing reality TV gifts, and I did a sticker giveaway. And I, like, spent all this money and did, um, like, a, I got all these prints and I actually, like, it's funny because I flopped, like, really bad and I wound up losing, like, a ton of money because it wound up being more expensive than I thought. But, you know, it was a lesson learned. That's how things happen, you know, when you start something or you start a business, you're going to make mistakes. But I did this sticker giveaway and there was a lot of you that bought stickers and got stickers and um, that I sent them to. And someone DM'd me the other day and they're like, I still have the sticker you sent me. And I was like, oh my God, wow, they lasted. Which I like sh- was shook because I remember I got the ones that had the plastic coating on them so that they would be able to last like in the water and like in rain and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. But um, those are the people that I care about. And you guys, um, you all have been so supportive and I appreciate it so, so much. And that I p- think pretty much covers this weekend chat. I really think you should go watch Pose. Let me know what you think about it. If you do, uh, send me a DM. I'm on Twitter, at T. Kyle Mack. Just make sure... So I set up this thing where if you're on Twitter, I only see responses from people who have confirmed their phone number and their email address. So if I miss a tweet from you, don't hate me. (laughs) Um, I just have like my notifications set to a certain thing right now, just because I've been getting a lot of harassment from certain people. So if not, just send me a DM on Instagram. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and chatting with me on this beautifully humid and disgusting Sunday meant to be a day of rest. Um, Oh, do I need to do a today we learned? Um, What did we learn today? Oh, Today we learned that Pose is amazing and you need to go watch it. And don't be bitter, be better. That's what we learned. (laughs) Should I end? I still don't know if I should end every single episode with what we learned today. Oh, also, I need to play The Sims. I bought The Sims 4 Island Living and I haven't had a chance to play it yet. Maybe I'll do that tonight. Maybe I'll stream on Twitch. I don't know. I streamed last week and my computer was kind of going through it. She was uh she was chugging along, but you know, we got through it. I am really awful at the Sims, but I just want to play this new pack. And uh maybe I'll do that. If you are on Twitch, my username is twitch.tv slash T Kyle Mac. Maybe I'll do that later. And if not, I will see you guys next week. I think next week I'm gonna actually gonna do a weekend chat on Monday after Pride so that I can tell you guys all about the float and I'm going to be in the parade, like walking the parade and then I'm seeing Kygo. And so if I'm not completely hungover and dead on Monday, I feel like I could do like a pride recap weekend chat because Friday and Saturday, I'm probably just going to be laying low and saving my energy and, you know, conserving my tits so I don't lose them. Um, so I can shake them off on Sunday. And um, thank you again to everyone. I can't say it enough. I want to say thank you to everyone who's been there since day one. Eight years ago, I started reality the, I started reality TV gifts on Tumblr, and it changed my career path. It has helped me teach myself so many new skills and learn so many new things. And for that, I am so grateful and appreciative. And I just hope you guys know that. I will see you guys soon have a good sunday and have a great week and shake your tits to on a roll by ashley o queen of pop and watch pose and below deck med okay bye